Hey, welcome back to the channel, everybody. This is Kevin. And in this week's video, we're gonna take a look at a security feature for our Cisco Catalyst switches, and it's called Private VLANs. I think you'll really enjoy that. And before we dive into the training, please do me a favor. At the end, if you enjoyed this video, please click that like button. It really helps the channel. And be sure and subscribe so you don't miss any of our weekly content. Now, join me for a discussion of Private VLANs. We often think of a VLAN as being the same as an IP subnet or a broadcast domain. We know that a broadcast seen on one port of a VLAN is seen on all ports of a VLAN. And everybody in a VLAN typically has an IP address that's part of the same subnet. But there might be some design scenarios where we need to isolate ports in a VLAN from other ports in that very same VLAN. And there are different situations where this design requirement might come up, but here's one example. Let's consider an office building like this. And the building management, they ran out different offices to lots of companies. We've got lots and lots of companies in this building, but from a networking perspective, we've got a VLAN per floor. And maybe on floor 15, we have VLAN 150. And everybody on floor 15, all these different companies, they all belong to the same subnet. They all belong to the 10.10.150.0/24 subnet. And from an IP addressing standpoint, that makes it easy to visualize. However, we've got different companies now belonging to the same VLAN. They can see one another's broadcasts or unknown unicasts or maybe multicasts. From a security perspective, we might want to prevent that. The great news is Cisco gives us a feature called Private VLANs that allows us to do just that. That's what we want to take a look at in this video. With the Private VLAN, we take a primary VLAN, VLAN 150 in our example, and we can subdivide it into different subdomains. We can have VLANs within a VLAN. And we've got a couple of different types of VLANs that we might have in this primary VLAN. Maybe in the example we have, we've got a couple of offices on floor 15 of this building that belong to the same company. It's fine if they belong to the same private VLAN. It's okay if they see one another's broadcasts. In fact, that might be a good thing for printer sharing or something like that. And what we can do is create a community VLAN. This is a VLAN, a private VLAN, within this primary VLAN. We've got VLAN 151 that's logically inside of VLAN 150. This is not a separate IP address space. This is just a subdomain within VLAN 150. Maybe there's another office on floor 15 and it's rented by a company, but it's only one office and it doesn't need to share a broadcast domain with any other offices on that floor. What we can do there is have an isolated VLAN. And this isolated VLAN is isolated from the community VLAN. Now, here's an important point. All of these ports that we set up on our switch to belong to one of these private VLANs, all of the ports belong to the primary VLAN, but just because they belong to the primary VLAN, that does not mean that they can share information with one another. What we're going to do, though, is set up something called a promiscuous port. And that promiscuous port is able to communicate into each of these private VLANs. And that might be the port that we use to send up to a router to get us out to the rest of the world. Let's say that we've got one other isolated VLAN here, another company renting just one office on floor 15 of our building, and it's going to be VLAN 153. We've got these three private VLANs that are all part of the same primary VLAN. Let's visualize what that would look like on a Cisco Catalyst switch. First of all, all of these ports going out to the different offices, all of the ports are going to belong to VLAN 150. Everybody belongs to the primary VLAN. And on this switch, we've got fast ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 1, all the way through fast ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 5, all belonging to the primary VLAN. And that first port, fast ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 1, we're going to make that a promiscuous port. And I'll show you how to do that in the live interface in a moment. And that's going to connect to an uplink router that gets us out to the rest of the world. But let's say that fast ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 2 and 1 slash 0 slash 3, those are members of this community VLAN. They're in the same broadcast domain. Maybe that's the same company. Fast Ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 4 is a member of VLAN 152. It's an isolated VLAN. And uh, Fast Ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 5, it's a member of another isolated VLAN, VLAN 153. And we said that that first port, Fast Ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 1, it's a promiscuous port. 
it's able to communicate with all of the private VLANs, all of the VLANs making up the primary VLAN, and that might be appropriate for a connection that gets us to an uplink router. The next couple of ports we said belonged to the community VLAN. Maybe they're part of company A. It's okay if they're sharing a broadcast domain, but we don't want their broadcasts from company A to be seen in company B, which is connected to VLAN 152. And we don't want the traffic from company A or company B to be intermingled with traffic from company C in VLAN 153. That's what a private VLAN can do for us. We can have some ports that are promiscuous, that can talk to everybody. We can have some ports that work together in a community. They can share information, but they can still logically be partitioned from other ports, maybe other isolated VLANs. An isolated VLAN port is not going to talk to any other port except a promiscuous port. And using this as our example, let's go out to a live interface right now and see how to configure this. We're configuring this switch for floor 15 on this building where we've got a primary VLAN of 150. We want fast ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 1 to be a promiscuous port so we can connect it to an uplink router. We want the next couple of ports to belong to company A in VLAN 151. That's going to be a community VLAN. Then we're going to have a couple of isolated VLANs. Let's go out to the live interface and check it out. Before we get going with our private VLAN configuration, there's an important prerequisite you need to know about. VTP either needs to be turned off or it needs to be in transparent mode. To confirm that we are in transparent mode, in global configuration mode, let's say VTP mode, transparent. And it looks like we were already in transparent mode, but if we were not, that command would have put us in transparent mode. Now let's create that primary VLAN. And remember, all of the ports, all five ports that we're dealing with, everybody's going to belong to that primary VLAN. And it's going to be VLAN 150. And to say that this is the primary VLAN for a private VLAN configuration, I say private hyphen VLAN. Let's give some context sensitive help. And I'm going to say that this is a primary VLAN. We'll say primary. Now let's create another VLAN. This is going to be a subdomain of a VLAN 150. It's a VLAN within a VLAN. Let's create VLAN 151. This is going to be our community VLAN. We've got a couple of ports that are going to belong to this VLAN. We'll say VLAN 151 and we'll say that this is a private VLAN and specifically it's a community VLAN. We've got a couple of isolated VLANs to create now. Let's create VLAN 152 and we'll say private hyphen VLAN isolated and let's create VLAN 153 also isolated. And now we've created our private VLANs. Next we want to go into the individual ports and say what kind of ports they are. Are they promiscuous ports or are they host ports? In other words, do they connect to a host? What VLANs are they associated with? First, let's do our promiscuous port. Let's go into fast ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 1 and we'll say switch port mode private hyphen VLAN and we can either say promiscuous or host. This is a promiscuous port. This is connecting to our uplink router. We'll say promiscuous and now let's associate VLANs with this promiscuous port. We'll say switch port private hyphen VLAN mapping and the primary VLAN is 150 and to that primary VLAN we want to add, we give the keyword of add and now we give those subdomains, those VLANs within a VLAN. Within VLAN 150 we have 151 and we'll give a comma, 152 and a comma and we also have 153. This promiscuous port can now communicate with all of these VLANs. Let's set up our community VLAN ports next. Let's go into interface range. That way we can do both ports at the same time. We'll go into interface range configuration mode for fast ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 2 dash 3. In interface range configuration mode we'll say switch port mode private hyphen VLAN. This time we'll say host. And now we'll specify the host association. We have to belong to the primary VLAN of 150 but in addition to that we want to belong to the community VLAN of 151. Here's how we do that. We say switch port private hyphen VLAN host hyphen association and we specify the primary VLAN of 150. We give a space and we specify this community VLAN of 151. Let's go do a similar configuration on the next two ports. We're going to go into interface fast ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 4 and again we'll say switch port mode private hyphen VLAN host and then we'll say switch port private hyphen VLAN host 
association. We've got to be associated with the primary VLAN of 150, but in addition to that, this port is going to be associated with the isolated VLAN of 152. One more port to go, interface fast ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 5. Again, we'll say switch port mode private VLAN host, and we'll set our association to the primary VLAN of 150 and also the isolated VLAN of 153. And we're now done with our private VLAN configuration. We've configured what we've talked about in this scenario. And here are a couple of verification commands we can give. We could say show VLAN private VLAN to see the private VLANs that we've created. Notice that we have a primary VLAN of 150, and then we've got these subdomains, these VLANs within a VLAN, in other words, the secondary VLANs of 151, 152, 153, and we see that 150 is the primary VLAN. We see that 151 is a community VLAN, 152, 153, those are isolated VLANs. And if we want to see more information about a specific port, we can do that. For example, let's say show interface fast ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 1, and we'll give the keyword of switch port. And we can see that its mode is private VLAN promiscuous. This is our uplink port. And we can see the private VLAN mapping. We've got all of our VLANs. The promiscuous port can communicate with all of our VLANs. Let's take a look at interface fast ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 2. Notice that instead of being in promiscuous mode, this is private VLAN host. And while the promiscuous mode port had this private VLAN mapping, we've got a host association. This host port is associated with VLAN 150, the primary VLAN, and 151, our community VLAN. And something else to understand about private VLANs is if we have trunks interconnecting our switches, you can actually have the private VLAN information sent over the trunk to neighboring switches. And the kind of trunk you might set up might vary depending on your Cisco Catalyst switch model. On some switches, it might just be a regular 802.1Q trunk, but on some of your higher end switches, you could have things like an isolated private VLAN trunk port or a promiscuous private VLAN trunk port. Check your documentation for your switch to see exactly how private VLANs are supported if you need to connect to another switch. However, there are some switches that do not support private VLANs at all. For example, the Cisco Catalyst 2950 does not support private VLANs. However, there is a feature that can give us a subset of this functionality. It's called the protected port feature. A protected port is also known as a private VLAN edge port. And here's the idea with a protected port. We could go into a Cisco Catalyst switch like a 2950 or even this 3750 that I'm on right now, and we could set up protected ports. And one protected port cannot communicate with another protected port. Even though they belong to the same VLAN, they are logically isolated. They're protected from one another. There isn't the concept of a community VLAN, however. We could just have these individual isolated ports. And there isn't really a concept of a promiscuous port, but an unprotected port can communicate with the protected ports. So having an unprotected port is somewhat analogous to having a promiscuous port. One of the challenges using the protected port option is that this protected port information is not carried to another switch. This is a locally significant designation to say that you are a protected port. We're not going to be able to send over a trunk information to a neighboring switch saying, hey, this port should be isolated within this subdomain. Now, we don't have that functionality with a protected port, but within a switch, it can in some cases be a great way to isolate one port from other ports. Here's how we would set that up. Let's go into interface fast ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 6. And the command we would give is switch port protected. And that's it. We can verify that this is a protected port by doing a show interface fast ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 6 switch port. And we can see down at the bottom of the output, protected is set to true. This is a protected port that is logically isolated from all other protected ports, but it's not isolated from unprotected ports. <laughs>